Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly we give thanks unto the Lord once again, for he is great and he's greatly to be praised. I want to thank and praise the Lord for each and every one of you that are tuning in to our broadcast on today. I know today is a special day, uh, Mother's Day. So we want to thank God for all of our mothers uh, and everyone that uh, has a mother that is still living. And if you have a mother that has gone on, um, you should automatically give God thanks uh, for them. So we want to thank and praise the Lord for all of our mothers on this special day. Uh, they go beyond, they go beyond the call of duty. A good mother goes beyond the call of duty. Uh, they often do the things that are mentally uh, incomprehensible to some and physically unable for others because they go beyond the call of duty. So we thank God for our mothers and, and we give God praise and glory uh, for them and the lives that they lead. And uh, today, honor your mother, honor your mother and also honor your father, but today's a special day. Honor your mother, uh, give God thanks and praise for them so that uh, they can appreciate, appreciate the things that they do for you. Show your appreciation. Also too, we want to uh, certainly go before the Lord in prayer as we uh, gather ourselves together uh, on this day, a day of celebration. Every day we should celebrate the Lord but especially on Sundays, we should really uh, set it in our hearts and set it in our minds that we will give God glory, honor, and thanks for all the things that he has done. Set out a special time, a special time, a special day to magnify the name of the Lord. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly want to do remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save. Uh, we're still in a saving station today. We're still in a, a saving, the church age is still going on. And the Lord still wants to see uh, people come unto him. Uh, the scripture says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. My God, <laughs> hallelujah. There's a lot of people, including ourselves, we need rest, rest in the Lord. So uh, he gives us that invitation to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Um, I, I can say I don't know about you, but I do know about you that you need God's grace. I know I need God's grace. I need God's mercy. So let us come boldly to the throne that we might obtain it, that we might receive it. God wants us to. And what I've learned over the, the course of this particular pandemic is the fact that we were made for God's grace. We were made to receive God's mercy and his strength. <clears throat> so let us come together and receive that which God has in store for us. And we can receive it through Christ Jesus, faith in his name. So let us pray uh, for all the things that are going on in the world that the Lord knows uh, time would not permit us to give all the uh, prayer requests that are needed and necessary. But the Lord knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. So let us <clears throat> make our requests known unto the Lord and let us uh, put our confidence and our trust in him that everything, not just some things, everything is going to be all right. Now y'all taking me back to my old roots. I got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right. Hallelujah, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna make me do some hand clapping and some foot stomping up in here <laughs> because everything is gonna be all right. And I'm trusting, I'm trusting in God and knowing the scriptures gives peace that uh, this current pandemic is not the way the world is going to end. It's not the way uh, the world is going to end. So we know that uh, Jesus is coming soon and he's gathering his people and God uses every mode and every means to get our hearts and our minds focused on the Lord. So don't uh, waste this uh, opportunity, uh, this time that uh, we're going through now. 
um, as, as being unconcerned about uh, the Lord, but focus in on the Lord. The Lord has caused a, a loud an interruption in our lives. I'm not saying that he has caused this pandemic, but he has allowed an interruption in our daily lives so that we could focus on him, so that we can focus on him. So let us take that time in our lives to focus, to refocus on the Lord. That word uh, repent, when we think of the word repent, it means to re, uh, uh, rethink, to redo. And that word pent means pentacle, uh, highest point. So uh, basically that word repent means to return to your highest point, or uh, return to the highest point uh, of living with God. Hallelujah. So let us repent, let us return ourselves unto the Lord, for he is great and he is greatly to be praised. So uh, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before these great people. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is here on today uh, that are tuning in. We ask you, Lord, that you bless all of our mothers uh, on this special day and encourage them and encourage them and strengthen them, Lord, to continue to do what they do uh, to provide strength and deliverance uh, for their children. Uh, we often say that the hand that rocks the cradle controls the world. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us mothers that care and that nurture our children and give them strength. And now, Lord, we honor them on today. We ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless our service on today, that something be said or done to inspire and to encourage our hearts. In the, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We want to welcome you once again to an, another live broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, where I am the lead pastor, uh, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn, and we thank God for our leadership here, and we thank God for um, our wife, uh, Lady Tracy Quinn, and we thank God for all the mothers that are here at Christian Ministries and are in the body of Christ, and we give glory and honor uh, to all, to all, thank you, Lord. We honor all men, we honor all women in the name of Jesus. And uh, we're an affiliate of the uh, Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith Church, um, and our particular diocese is the Night Pain States Council, where our leader is uh, Bishop Clarence Turner. And I wanna give a shout out to all of our uh, Night Pain State Council churches, uh, that are tuning in on today. Uh, stay strong, be strong. Hallelujah. It's a night pain thing. <laughs> so we certainly do thank God uh, for uh, all of the uh, people of God that are coming together uh, to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. So we certainly uh, have a great lesson. Our lesson comes from the Union Gospel Press, and we're in... Um, May 10th, lesson number 11, and our subject uh, this morning is uh, One King Over All, and it's coming out of the book of Ezekiel, uh, the 37th chapter, uh, verses 15 through 25. And uh, once again, our lessons have been really focused in on uh, the the Jesus Christ being the king, being the Messiah, uh, being the branch. And um, I really appreciate um, these particular lessons because in my mind, they lead me to the day of Pentecost, uh, the, the 40 days or the 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And Pentecost is coming up, it's coming up. Um, and um, so in these times, it's always a time to magnify the name of the Lord, but especially in these times, we could, should keep him in our remembrance. And when I say we should keep him in our remembrance, we should 
uh, think about the power and the glory and the majesty that he has and, and what he has to offer his subjects, his citizens that are of the kingdom of God. It's a great day. I am so glad and excited uh, to be a part of the body of Christ. I am so glad and excited just to be in that number. Thank you, Lord, to trust in the Lord. And we're living in a time where we need something to trust in. And um, our faith has to be sure. You can have faith and confidence in anything. But not all things are able to deliver. Not all things are able to set free. But one thing that is a guarantee is that we ought to have faith and confidence in Christ because he's a sure foundation. Hallelujah. He's a sure and a solid rock. In these changing times, don't let the world change your mind. Hallelujah. And keep your mind focused on Jesus. Hallelujah, my God. All right, so we got to get into the lesson. I feel like praising him. Thank you, Lord. I feel like praising him. <laughs> so in the book of uh, Ezekiel, and our subject once again is one king over all. One king over all. And our lesson once again is found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse uh 15 through 25. And that first verse reads as thus, Ezekiel 37, uh, verse 15, he says, And the word, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying. And I, and I love that. I love that about uh, Ezekiel and all of the prophets when they said, And the word of the Lord. So, they, that, that tells us it's God's word that they're prophesying. It's God's word that they're bringing forth. I love, I love good preaching. I love good teaching. But I want that word to be rooted and grounded in God's word. I don't want a man's opinion. Um, I don't want a, a man's thoughts and man's uh, ideas when it comes down to the word of God. I want God's word. Uh, because the word of the Lord, it's able to build you up and give you that inheritance that are among them that are sanctified. So uh, Ezekiel, in this 37th chapter, um, he first talked about a very familiar passage of scripture that had been preached on down through the, 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 the years, uh, the dry bones. So he just got through prophesying about the dry bones and and God gave him the revelation to say that those dry bones are literally an army that God himself would be raising. And what I like about uh, Ezekiel is the fact that Ezekiel, he prophesied uh, before and after the captivity of Israel when they went down into Babylon uh, for their transgressions for 70 years. So Ezekiel, he actually was captured uh, by the Babylonians, and he also, too, lived through um, this particular uh, captivity. And he gave, he gave a prophecy before it uh, concerning what would happen before, and he gave prophecy about what would happen after. So this particular chapter here, he's, he's prophesying what would happen after the captivity, what God was going to do. God has a plan, even though we may at times go through periods in our lives of captivity, uh, sometimes it's uh, people turn away from the Lord. And that's not a new thing that people turn away from the Lord, but when, when an individual goes into captivity, goes into a place where the enemy uh, uh, is attacking them. Uh, you always have to remember that, that, that turning back to the Lord, God has an end for all captivity. And, and that end uh, for all captivity begins with a turning to the Lord. It begins with repentance and turning to the Lord, a change in the heart, a change in the will, a change in the mind. 
uh, repentance, true repentance, is not an emotional. You can repent without shedding one tear, but you cannot repent without the changing of your thoughts, the changing of your heart, the changing of your mind, which contains your will and your desires. You have to, in order to truly repent, you have to change your thoughts, your ways to match up with the thoughts and the ways of God. That's true repentance. Not sobbing, not crying, not, not, not tearful. That comes along with it. But, but true repentance, a truly repentant heart, is a heart that turns back to God in, in the sense of they're turning and changing their will. They're changing their ways to match up uh, to realign with God. So um, as we see here then, um, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15, I'm laughing uh, because uh, I told my wife, you know, uh, we, we, we discuss the scriptures often, and, and I tell her, you know, that yeah, some people beat, beat a point down, and, uh, and I said, yeah, you know, I'm like that too. I can stay on one scripture for a whole hour. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to move on in the word of the Lord. Uh, it says here, verse uh, Ezekiel 37, verse 15, it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, and that's what we need to know. We need to know the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Preachers, leaders, give the people the word of the Lord. That's why uh, Paul said, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's in the word of God wherein people can be saved and delivered. We are ambassadors for Christ. We're servants of Christ. And the word angel means messenger. So we also should be messengers of the word of the Lord. So notice. He said, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Moreover, um, thou son of man, take one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, uh, his companions. Take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel. Uh, his companions. Verse 17, it says, And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And the reason why I read those two verses of Scripture together is because those Scriptures go hand in hand. They go together. And um, if we were to, uh, we don't have time, but if we were to Go to the book of, uh, what is it, the book of Numbers, chapter 17, verses 1 through 26. We'll see wherein God uh, had used the metaphor of a stick or a rod to represent the, the 12 tribes of Israel. With, um, um, what's his name, Aaron representing the tribe of Levi. And God told Moses to to have all the leaders of the tribe get together a stick and the rod that buds, uh, basically um, they, uh, they are the ones that are, are symbolizing the blessing, the ones that they, uh, I'm gonna just say it this way, um, should, should be engaged in. And the rod that budded after that day uh, was the rod of Levi the Aaron's rod, where the priesthood comes. And that's why um, that rod budded and, um, and it, it brought forth almonds. And um, God was showing that, that his favor upon them. And so this concept then, uh, the reason why I bring that out, is this concept then of a rod uh, represents uh, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. And um, the key to this particular verse or this particular uh, lesson is oneness, is oneness. Um, the children of Israel, um, after the reign of Solomon, uh, 
um, David and Solomon had good reigns as, as kings uh, for the children of Israel. And uh, both, all tribes were united unto them. And, but after Solomon died, um, the reign was passed over to Solomon's son, son Rehoboam. And uh, Rehoboam, he took some bad advice. You know, um, uh, it's good to listen to the elders and to the wise people uh, that are in your church or that are in your life. Uh, sometimes young people, uh, they could be filled with vim and vigor and, and, and not knowing and having um, their own wisdom but never having tried and true wisdom. Rehoboam, uh, the elders came to him and said, if you uh, listen to us and deal favorably with us, I'm paraphrasing, uh, we will serve you. And so he went back to, uh, Rehoboam went back to his friends, his buddies, and, um, and got advice from them. And basically they said, man, look, put your foot up on their neck and uh, treat them bad. You know what I mean? Be, 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 be tougher than your father. So uh, he went back to the nation uh, or to the leaders and said, I'm going to be harder on you than my father Solomon was. I'm going to be, uh, he used the word a scorpion <laughs> uh, on you. And um, so uh, that was bad advice. We should not, uh, we got to watch out for the advice that we take. Amen. Uh, don't discard the, the, the Bible says, honor the hoary head. Uh, don't discard the wisdom and advice of the elders or those that have lived through something. I'm not saying that young people don't have wisdom and knowledge and understanding, but in uh, never discount the, the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of older people uh, because it's like the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a, is a guide, is, is one that leads us and guides us. And the Holy Ghost has been where we're trying to go. So therefore, it makes the Holy Ghost is a perfect guide. It's a perfect leader because it has already been where we're trying to go. So what are you saying, Brother Pastor? It knows the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've got to follow after people that know the way. So, so, so uh, back to the story here. Uh, the kingdom then... Uh, because of Rehoboam's uh, taking the advice of the younger people, uh, the kingdom was divided, separated uh, between uh, King uh, Rehoboam and then another king that rose up was Jeroboam. And um, Rehoboam uh, was of the tribe of Judah, so uh, Benjamin and Judah went with them. And then um, uh, the other remaining 10 tribes went with uh, Jeroboam. So uh, we have two kings, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and the kingdoms were divided. Judah was the southern kingdom, uh, and the northern kingdom was the other 12 tribes. And, um, uh, I'm sorry, the other 10 tribes. And um, uh, so the, 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 the southern kingdom, uh, they were captured and went down into Babylon. The northern kingdom, they were captured, uh, but the Assyrians ruled over them. That's where we get uh, the uh, Samaritans. Uh, you know, the Jews and the Samaritans always bumped heads because the Jews never really considered uh, the Samaritans what were half-breed um, um, uh, uh, Jews, uh, their, their kinfolk. But uh, uh, that's why you have the feuds within them. So um, just to go back then, we see here then, I'm setting all that to set you up for the lesson. So he says, moreover, uh, verse 16, moreover, thou son of man, take one stick, the sticks represent uh, the tribes of Israel. Take one stick and write upon it uh, for Judah. Judah 
was uh, the southern kingdom that went down into Babylon uh, for the children of Israel, his companions. And take another stick and write upon it, Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. You know, Joseph had two sons, uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. And, um, uh, and so they represented the northern kingdom and for all the house of Israel and his companions. So, so, so the, uh, Ezekiel was to use a physical, a physical prop to show forth a prophecy uh, unto the children of Israel as a whole, to use a physical prop, and that physical prop was a stick. And notice what he says, join them one to another, one stick uh, into one stick, that they shall come one in the hand. So what, what God was saying here was that, uh, as I said earlier, that oneness is the key to this particular uh, uh, lesson. God wants his people to be one. Uh, 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 the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God wants his people on one accord with him. God wants oneness with him. God really wants, he says, scripture says, in him we live, in him we move and have our being. Jesus put it this way, in order to be uh, one with uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you have to abide in Christ. And you abide in him through his word. Uh, and, and you're translated in him through his spirit. So um, um, God wants us to have the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, be one with Christ and, and to live as one. And not only uh, us being related to being one with Christ, but he wants the whole body of Christ to operate as one. He wants all of his members to operate as one. And the purpose of the enemy is to divide. And the scripture says a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. That's why in a church, uh, you got, uh, uh, we're all different members in particular, but we're all part of one body. We should all have one mind, one focus, one goal, one purpose. And yeah, are, are there gonna be some disagreements? Are there going to be some arguments? Are there going to be some fights? Uh, yeah, there are going to be some arguments, disagreements, and fights because we, 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 have, we all have, if you allow me to say it this way, we all have an opinion. Thank you, Lord. We all are individuals. God doesn't want you to lose out on your individuality. Uh, he doesn't want you to lose out on your personality. But he wants you to submit to working together. Uh, hallelujah, to accomplish a common goal, to accomplish a common purpose. Thank you, Lord. God doesn't want us walking around as robots, unable to feel, unable to touch, unable to think. God wants us to have our individuality in that respect. But when it comes down to the kingdom of God and to working together, he wants us to lay aside our own individual agendas and focus in on the agenda of God. Hallelujah. Focus in on the agenda of our leader. Thank you, Lord. And, and the pastor is the particular leader in the church who should have a word from the Lord. Amen. And people should congregate, uh, submit themselves to that authority that is reigning, if you allow me to say it this way, and I don't mean it in a, in a, in a way in which uh, it's communist, but, but, but people should submit to the powers and to the authority that is in the church. Hallelujah. And, and, and I want to say this, my God, since we're on that, I don't know why I got on that, but, but um, uh, and, and everybody that's in the body of Christ has uh, authority that we should submit to. Uh, a perfect example is this. I could be the presiding bishop, thank you, Lord, uh, walking into a service, and the usher, uh, the doorkeeper, can say, Bishop, I want you to go 
in this direction. The presiding bishop should submit to that uh, usher's authority and go in that position and go in that way. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because it's proper protocol. The, uh, we should respect one another's authority. We should respect one another's position. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so, so that there's no big eyes, there's no little U's. We all have our assignments. We all have our way of conducting ourselves, but we must uh, respect each other and respect all others' position and authority. I got to respect the position of the deacon. I got to respect the position of the uh, administrators, uh, of, of the ushers, and, and so forth down the line. Thank you, Lord. And follow and follow after that which is decent and in order. So um, having said that, going back to our lesson, thank you, Lord. When we get into our lesson here, we see that the oneness. God has always wanted his church to be one, no longer divided, no longer in, in, in divisiveness. Thank you, Lord. One, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hallelujah. One spirit. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. One power, one strength, one anointing. Hallelujah. One God. Hallelujah. That's in you all and through you all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so, so, so um, Ezekiel was giving them a physical example of the oneness of, of what God was about, was going to do after their captivity. So notice, uh, verse 17, he says, uh, Ezekiel 37 and 17, he says, and join them one to another into one stick that they shall uh, become one in thine hand, so that they'll be one in the hand of the Lord. And the children, and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, uh, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest of these? Notice verse 19. He says, Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will take, and anytime you see the word behold, it means God is going to do a new thing. He's going to do a bold thing, something that is miraculous. So God says, behold, tell them, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, that's the northern tribe, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and I will put them uh, with him even of the stick of Judah and that's the southern tribe remember they were divided uh, northern tribes and the southern tribes and I will make them one tribe one stick and they shall be one in my hand God hallelujah God wants to reunite his people my Lord God wants to gather his people together to be as one. God wants the church to be as one. When I say the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ. And then the, a symbol of that, God wants his physical church, the people, the church where the people come to the brick and mortar, he wants them to operate as one. How do you operate as one in the physical brick and mortar? You be subject to leadership. Hallelujah. Subject to the pastor, subject to those that are in position. Not only the pastor, like I already said, uh, the, the ushers, the deacons, hallelujah, all the, the authority and the leadership of, uh, appointments that are in the church. God wants us to respect each other and to respect each other's authority as we operate in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Don't be a hypocrite. No big eyes, no little U's, as we all are focused in on one goal and one purpose, and that should be of the building up of the body of Christ. Our goal and our purpose should, and the anointing that God has given unto us should be focused on, on, on turning people from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, 
It, it, we should be focused. The reason why we are anointed, hallelujah, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Anointed me to do what? To promote the gospel, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, to, to promote that gospel and to, to heal the brokenhearted, to, to, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and we should preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And and that's that's our focus. Our focus is not to not to kill people or to destroy people, but our people uh, is we should have the focus, like Jesus says, my will is to do the will of him that sent me. We have to focus and be one in doing the will of him that sent us. And in order to do that, we've got to humble ourselves beneath the mighty hand of God so that his kingdom can be exalted. There's people that are, that are, that are scattered across this whole world. Thank you, Lord, that need salvation, that need deliverance, that, that need hope. Hallelujah. And, and we should be the body of Christ, the messengers of hope. We should be the messengers, hallelujah, to cry loud and to spare not and to uh, declare that the will of God shall set you free. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And that's what we should be promoting. That's what we should be lifting up, the will of the Lord. Now notice, notice. Uh, verse verse 20, and he says, And the sticks wherein thou hast written shall be in the hand uh, before their eyes. Uh, uh, so, so he's telling them to make this a, a, a physical example, hallelujah, of, of the oneness. And they would have recognized and understood what this meant because they would have been students of uh, what happened or what took place in uh, the book of uh, Numbers, what we talked about earlier, uh, Numbers chapter 17. So we see here, uh, verse 21, notice, and he says, say unto them, you know, proclaim it, tell them, say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, my God, hallelujah. And that's what people ought to be prophesying and, and, and talking about. What thus saith the Lord God? Hallelujah. For the word of God is given by inspiration to, to, uh, of God. So that, so that basically uh, we can uh, receive instruction and correction. Hallelujah. That the man or the woman of God may be thoroughly furnished. I mean, that word thoroughly furnished literally means that they would be competent uh, in all areas of life. They would be competent in all areas of doctrine and of teaching. Thank you, Lord. That 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 it wouldn't it be a glorious church if everybody knew the doctrine of marriage? Wouldn't it be a glorious church if everybody knew the doctrine of salvation? Wouldn't it be a glorious church if everybody knew the doctrine of forgiveness? Wouldn't it be a glorious church if everybody knew the doctrine of mercy and of grace? Hallelujah, and, and the doctrine of transgression and sin. Wouldn't it be a glorious church if everybody had the same mind, the same teaching, and, and being on one accord, understanding what is the will of God? It would be a glorious church. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, with order. So we see here then, um, verse uh, 21, and he says, Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, and whither they be gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. So basically God's saying they have been dispersed for these 70 years, and I'm going to bring them back together. Uh, I'm going to gather them together again. Hallelujah, my God. Only God can do that, my Lord. Only God can do that. Thank you, Jesus. And notice, I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be the king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, 
neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. So notice what God is saying. God is saying that he's going to bring his, those, those two nations back together and to make them one. And literally, uh, this particular prophecy uh, has yet to be fulfilled and it will be fulfilled fully in the millennium kingdom of Jesus Christ. So it's literally speaking of a time that is yet to come. Uh, that is yet to come. And this, the totality of this particular scripture has yet to be fulfilled and it will totally be fulfilled in the millennium kingdom of Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes back to the earth and sets up his reign upon this earth. Thank you, Lord. And that is going to be yet in times to come. But I want to focus in on a few things here. Thank you, Lord. It says here, And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. So we know that the capital of the millennium kingdom will be in Jerusalem. It will be in Israel. Notice what he says. Um, upon the mountains, and one king shall be king to them all. So, so we're looking, uh, hallelujah, for one king. And that one king is going to be Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's going to establish the kingdom of God upon this earth uh, during his millennial rule upon this earth. Just going to be Jesus. And that, that prophecy is yet to come to pass. Hallelujah. And, and the saints of God, we're going to be with him in his rule. Hallelujah. My God. I look forward to that day. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we go through a lot of tests. We go through a lot of trials. But the scripture says if you don't suffer with him, you can't reign with him. And when he's talking about reigning with him, it's going to be a glorious reign. It's going to be a glorious reign, not, not something that's not uh, is going to be frivolous, that's going to be fleeting, but it's going to be from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. And, and we're all going to be given job assignments. Uh, thank you, Lord, because part of that is we're going to be rewarded according to how our work shall be. So what are you saying, Pastor Quinn? What you're doing now helps determine your work assignment in the future. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's why the scripture says, don't be weary in well-doing, for ye shall reap if you faint not. Hallelujah, my God. So that's why he says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present world or this present time are not worthy to be compared to the, to the, to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah, my God. I'm teaching right now. I hope you receive it because if you receive this teaching, it'll help you to go through your tests and your trials, looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. If, if you receive this teaching right now, you'll be able to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You'll be like Paul saying, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. What day? The day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So, so brothers and sisters, thank you, Lord. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials as some strange thing has happened unto you. My God, don't think it's strange that, that what you're going through now, uh, when God brings you out, that it's over. Hallelujah. God is going to bless those that are steadfast and unmovable, that, that are always abounding in the work of the Lord. Notice, for as much as you know, your labor, <laughs> hey, hallelujah, is not in vain. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. So we see here, we see here then, we see here then in the scriptures, it says, uh, verse 22, he says, I will make them one nation 
in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king uh, to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. So there won't be a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, but there'll be one kingdom. And that's, that's what uh, uh, God wants. Thank you, Lord, even for the body of Christ. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So we've got to recognize that we are a part of the kingdom of God. And what makes you a part of the kingdom of God is when you follow God's orders, his word, his command. When what establishes a kingdom are laws, commandments, decrees, amen? And, and, and in order to be a part of the kingdom, you have to follow his laws, his commands, his decrees. If you're not uh, uh, um, following after the commands, the laws, and the decrees, you're not a part of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the, the being to be a part of this kingdom, you've got to repent. You've got to turn from old laws, old ways of thinking and establish yourself in the new laws and the new ways of thinking. And in to order to help you, in order to help you, in order to help you to submit, you have to receive the Holy Spirit or to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Hallelujah. And, and, and if you just ask God, hallelujah, it's not a mystery. Uh, the Holy Ghost receiving the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, uh, it's not a mystery. It should not be hard for us. All we have to do is say, Lord, I'm tired of living the way I've been living and, and, and I want to follow your laws and your ways. And all you have to do is totally repent. Hallelujah. And God, and ask him to fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And he will fill you because it's of his good pleasure. Thank you, Lord. He wants you to have it. Hallelujah. And all you got to do is have faith in Christ and receive it. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. All right. So we see here, verse 23. And he says, Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with idols, nor with detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. God does not want you to continue in sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we repent. And, 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 and in repentance, uh, true repentance is a turning of the heart, the turning of the mind, the will, the way of living, not following after the laws of, of the world or the laws of the flesh, but following after the law of the spirit. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life, hallelujah, which is in Christ Jesus. It has set us free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah, my God, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's some good teaching here. Hey, glory, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. So we see here then, so we see here then, God does not want you to keep on sinning. Uh, that's why he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Um, notice then, um, he says, but I will give, I will save them out of, or out of their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and I will cleanse them. See, that word cleanse them. He'll clean you up. Hallelujah. That means he'll clean you up. Won't he make you clean <laughs> inside? Hallelujah. He'll make you clean. Hallelujah. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to his word. Hallelujah. That's how you become clean. So shall they notice. Be my people and I will be their God. Hallelujah. God wants to be your God. 
But the, uh, in order for God to be your God, you have to submit to him as Lord. Hallelujah. As, as your ruler. Thank you, Lord. And you have to follow after his ways. You can't do what you want to do and say that you're a part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's impossible. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. You've got to submit yourself to the word of God. Walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. And follow after the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And God helps us. By, by giving us of his spirit, hallelujah, and giving us of the fivefold ministry. He gave some apostles and, and prophets and some uh, pastors and teachers and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ. And, and they should bring the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Not, not, not our opinion. Uh, uh, not our own thoughts, but we should give the people the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And don't be afraid of their faces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. And, and that word and, and the mission of, of the fivefold ministry is not to bind people, but to free people so that they can serve the Lord. Uh, so when I say free people, I mean free them from their sinful ways. Free them from their sinful actions so that they can serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with joy. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our job is to encourage you. Thank you, Lord, to build you up, to give you strength, to give you what you need in order to break free from the enemy. Hallelujah. To be uh, free and separate from the kingdom of darkness, to walk in the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. My God. So let me move on. Hallelujah. I got about five more minutes. Notice what he says. Verse 24, and it says, And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And that's a reference to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's a reference to Jesus. There's a lot of controversy over this particular verse. Thinking some think that David is going to be reincarnated, uh, whatever. But that's, that's not true. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. David has died and gone on. Hallelujah. And he is himself is subject to Jesus. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. But, but notice, God is not the God of the dead. But God is the God of the living. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, my God in heaven. So we see here, and David, my servant, shall be king over them. That's a reference to Jesus. And they shall have one shepherd. Who's that one shepherd? Jesus, my God. And they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. I said earlier, if a, a, a kingdom is nothing without laws, it's nothing without order. If you're going to be a part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, you have to walk in his judgments. You have to observe his statutes and you have to do them. Hallelujah. Teach Pastor Quinn. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you can't say you're not a part of the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you're not walking in his ways, you can't say that you're a part of the kingdom if you're not following after the will of the Lord. In order to be a part of the kingdom of Christ, you've got to follow after his judgments, his statutes, and his ways. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. And that's, and that's Jesus. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, my Lord. So we see here then, verse 25, and in our conclusion, we're trying to wind this up. Hey, my God, we go on forever. Hallelujah. We see here, we see here, and they shall dwell in the land I give, uh, I have given them unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children for how long? Forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. 
So that's a reference there uh, to the established millennium kingdom that Jesus Christ himself is going to establish. Hallelujah. We're going to have a rapture. The church is going to be raptured up. Uh, then the tribulation is going to set in. And then Jesus is going to come back and to establish his millennial kingdom down here on the earth. And those that abide and trust in him will come back and rule with Jesus forever and ever and ever. So, so the key to this particular lesson is being one. Amen? You have to be one with Jesus in order to, to rule and reign with Jesus. And the only way to be one with Jesus, you have to repent. Amen? Uh, pent, repent, as we said earlier, it, it comes from a word of re, and that means to uh, redo. Uh, uh, pent comes from a word that means pinnacle or, 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 or penthouse. In other words, it means to be, uh, to be reestablished to your highest order. And, and if we look at Adam and Eve, uh, the problem with them and the reason why they got kicked out of the garden is because they did not repent. If they would have repented, God would have restored them. God would have forgiven them and they would have kept their position in the garden. Hallelujah. But they, if you look at it, study it out. They did not repent. They blamed each other. And that's what sinful people do. We blame each other for our problem. <laughs> uh, now I'm getting into a whole nother subject here. I don't want to get into it. I ain't got time. But we blame other people for our problems. Don't blame other people for your problems. Thank you, Lord. It says it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer and repent. And God will reestablish you. God will reform you to your highest order. And your highest order is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it's in him we live. It's in him we move. And it's in him we have our being. And then you have to follow after the word of God, which means that you have to repent. After you repent, get baptized in the name of Jesus because Jesus taught that you've got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. You got to be born again. Uh, you, can't, you can't live this life until you have been crucified with Christ, until you have gone down in his name. Hallelujah. And once you have gone down in the name of Jesus, you come out of that water to walk in the newness of life. And in, while you're going through that process, you need some power because the enemy is going to attack you. Hallelujah. And he gives you the gift of the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is ask. Hallelujah. You ain't got to cry for it. You ain't got to snot for it. All you got to say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that you can have that power. Hey, Lord. Hallelujah. So that you can live this life. Hallelujah. And then follow after. Follow after Jesus. And I just want to say this in my conclusion. Thank you, Lord, that, that I didn't, when, when the Lord saved me, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know about uh, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But when, I, when the Lord led me to repentance and I got baptized in the name of Jesus, I believe at that time because there was a renewal. When I got baptized in the name of Jesus, I felt all that weight of sin just fall off of me. And, 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 and there was a renewal in my mind, in my spirit. I was depressed, but he took that depression away and gave me joy unspeakable. And then the brother told me, I went to the, the, the prayer meeting. The brother said, man, you need the Holy Ghost. And I said, hey, if I need it, I want it. Hallelujah. And, and I began to pray and ask the Lord to fill me with the Holy Ghost. And he filled my soul with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. It was either, uh, uh, like I said, I believe I got it when I got baptized, but I didn't know. So I'm going to say it like this. He refilled. <laughs> 
He refilled my soul with the Holy Ghost. And now I know, I know I got it. Hallelujah. Why? Because the life that I live, uh, it's not because of me, but it's because of the power that resides in me. All glory belongs to God. All glory and honor belongs to the Lord. So my friend, why are you saying that? I'm saying that, that if you are, are, are down and out, if you know God is leading you to a change, all you got to do is, is repent and turn, say, Lord, I want to change. There's something better in life. I need your help. And, and the Lord will help you. It's because the goodness of the Lord is leading you to repentance. He's leading you to a place where you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God says that in the last days, which we're living in now, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you've done. Hey, it doesn't matter where you've been. Thank you, Lord. God said, I'm gathering my people who are scattered across this world. And they're scattered across this world doing wicked and evil things. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. But God, who is rich in mercy, ah, wherein he loved us. Thank you, Lord. He sent his only begotten son. Thank you, Lord, to die on the cross for you and I so that we can be reconciled unto God. Hallelujah. Verily, for a righteous man would some die. The Bible says, peradventure, some would even, a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, he commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while I was dead in my trespasses and sin, while I was committing fornication and adultery, hallelujah, murder and witchcraft, hallelujah, Christ died. He gave of his life. Hey, hallelujah, for a sinner like you and I. Thank you, Lord, so that we can have a right to the tree of life. My friend, hey, glory. So, hey, hallelujah, don't be weary in well-doing. I know I've gone over my time, but somebody need to hear this message. Somebody is on the verge of suicide. Don't kill yourself. Turn to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Hey, hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah, my God. We thank God for this word on today. Hey, hallelujah. We thank God for the anointing. Hey, hallelujah. We thank God for a word of hope and a word of salvation. Hallelujah. All you've got to do, my friend, thank you, Lord. You can call me huh, at 814 814- 434-1218 and I'll help you. Hey, hallelujah, my God in heaven. Thank you, Lord, so you can get some help. Hey, hallelujah, so your soul can be saved, so your soul can be set free in the name of Jesus. Remember, <laughs> hallelujah, to give your tithes and your offering. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I know that's kind of funny for a preacher to say after he's given a message of salvation, but, but you know, uh, the ministry got to be carried on. So uh, give your tithes and your offerings. Uh, send them to the church, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street. Uh, send them through Tidely. Thank you, Lord. And uh, also, uh, you can deliver them to our church. Put them in our drop box, which is safe and secure. Uh, but more than that, if you want salvation, if you want deliverance, just give us a call. Thank you, Lord. Inbox me. Shoot me a messenger. Thank you, Lord. And I'll get with you. Thank you, Lord. And I'll help to lead you to Christ. Hallelujah, my God. And, and if you need to be baptized, I can, I, we can do the ceremony. You can get baptized in your own tub. Hallelujah. I'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the process in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you truly repent, God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. How shall you hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except he be sent? Faith come by hearing, and that by the word of God. We thank God for you. Stay tuned for our 11 o'clock service, uh, and we appreciate you, and we give God glory for you. In Jesus' name, amen.